Hello violas and welcome to your second tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be thinking about the Paganini Caprice number 24 and of course this is coming on Friday um, and you will have already heard our Zoom sectional together on Wednesday which will have been live. Um, of course I will have touched on I'm sure some of this already then so this is intended as a kind of recap as well as a sort of introduction to perhaps a few new ideas. Um, but essentially, because this is week one, this is sort of stage one of the process and we'll be adding and going into a few more specific uh, technical things in weeks two and three. So sit tight for that. Uh, to start with, I just wanted to remind you that this, of course, was originally intended as a solo violin caprice. Um, it was a virtuosic um, concert piece. The fact that we get to play it too is really, really great because it offers us this opportunity to not only have a lot of fun with it, but to really think about all the technical challenges um, that it faces us with. Um, I would just like to say as well that caprice, obviously, and the word capricious are very closely related. And something that's capricious is something that changes rapidly for no apparent reason. It's impulsive and has a lot of verve and excitement. And that is very much the um, qualities, uh, those are the qualities that I would love for us to get in our sound, in our spirits when we play this, particularly when we come to performing it. So, um, without further ado, let's just start at the very beginning. You can see that we come in on bar five. I would like fingering-wise for us, please, to start with the fourth finger and then the open A. So, you can probably see, I hope, there's a kind of moment of recoil after my down bow. Actually, with an open A as well. Can you see my bow kind of goes down and then up a tiny bit again? That just allows us to really re-articulate that dot on the second A. Um, I don't want you to go... Because that just sounds boring and flat and lifeless. And this has to be um, dancing and light and... Lovely. So let's have a lovely recoil. Rather than which is a little bit pedestrian. Um, and that applies to the whole of this theme. Uh, variation one. This is a really funky one for little bows to massive amounts of bows. So we're using our open strings perhaps first, we're gonna go like this. And just think about where we're pushing and pulling from. I'm gonna add the notes in now. Um, I think for my down bows, I'm actually pushing from sort of these muscles in my arm as well as pulling from my shoulder blade, and then the up bow, I'm sort of initially perhaps pushing from my back of my hand, and again though it is all coming from the back, so really use your whole bodies to get those fast bows in for those accents, and that will sound amazing. Now variation two, this can be thought of really um, in intervals, so let's first of all forget all of the um, articulation stuff, and just first of all tune it, and let's really use our open strings to help us. So this is the first note is an A. So an obvious choice to tune that would be to find the fourth without open D. So once we found that, and that's perfect, you tune. And really listen for the ringing of the strings, the resonance, until your viola is like glowing and vibrating with the joys of these intervals. A to find the fifth as well with the E. And then the next bar. So really slowly just working your way through all of these different intervals and it's almost I think like a scaffolding that you have one strong piece of metal in and then you use that to like to angle another one and once that's secure you can kind of use it to get another one in there and just like build it up um, using your fourths, fifths and octaves, all of your perfect intervals to help you where you can. Then we add in the articulation, so we've got tenutos, so nice heavy sort of uh, downward strokes with more spicky 
fingery, um, active bow hold sort of movements. So. <laughs> Um, let's really, really over exaggerate uh, all of those articulations because, particularly in slow motion, it's a fantastic idea to just blow it all out of proportion, just do everything over the top. Going on to variation three, um, I would just like to similarly focus first on the left hand. Let's ignore our right hand entirely for now. And this is a really nice way of not panicking when it comes to chords because chords obviously intonation is really important and without intonation um, we can't deliver the, the message of the music. We want our instruments to ring, that's sort of the, the purity of the, the music and of the tone and it's a really important, important element as I'm sure you know. So first of all, similarly to the very beginning of this whole piece with our fourth fingers and open A situations, let's find that and find a really solid fourth finger. You'll see that my third finger is quite happily nestled beneath it. Just my, it's, it's pressing down almost as if it were playing a note in its own right, just to give um, sort, of, sort of support to that fourth finger. So, fourth fingers are our anchor, and from there we're gonna reach back. You can see my first and second fingers are kind of free to do what they will. And in this case, I want them to just very happily and comfortably kind of curl back um, down the neck of my viola and find that C. And the lighter, the better, because then you can adjust your intonation until it feels and sounds like it's ringing. And then the same with the, the B. And oscillate between the two chords. Really feel how that feels in your hand. Listen to it, hear how your instrument is ringing and resonating when it's perfectly in tune. And if it's not, then adjust it. Make sure you don't reinforce the finding, but reinforce when it's found. I notice so often that we spend so much time like fiddling around trying to find something. Where is it? Is it there? And then you actually only once get it and then you move on because it's done. Let's at least spend the same amount of time playing it, enjoying the correctness of it before we move on to the next thing. I'm sure it sounds really obvious, but it's easier said than done. Um, then, once we've done a lovely, calm um, look at the intonation in that methodical way, let's think only about our right hand. So no left hands needed. Let's just do some lovely circles at the heel. Really letting our strings resonate um, and really make those circles in the air. You can imagine that this little nut at the bottom of my bow is just making lovely big ovals um, just to my right. And then we marry the two up. And even when you're doing both at the same time, and if you feel that something's uncomfortable, stop and really try and analyse for yourselves what that is. What is it that you could look more at? If it's your left hand intonation, then forget your right hand and let's go back to the intonation stuff. If it's the other way around, if your right hand seems to be screwing your left hand up, then forget your left and let's think more about the right. And just keep kind of balancing it out and being really conscious and slow about it until you feel like you're nailing it a bit more. So variation four, this one in the original, um, it's just got loads of octaves in the violin part and you can see how that could be because we're being asked to play sol G, so just on the G string and always with our first finger. So rather than just thinking of our first finger here, let's actually imagine with our hand shape that we're playing the upper octave too, just because that will be a really useful kind of almost training step to the next thing should we ever be asked to play an octave. So we might as well use this as a really useful exercise. Um, when we shift around, um, let's make sure that we're really releasing on the shift. So let's first of all have a nice sort of nice weight with our first finger. And then before we move off it, we lighten any pressure off. Just let your finger rest like with no pressure on the string. And then just very, as soon as you reach your target note, you just gradually apply the pressure again. Not too much, just a little. The idea is that we want really light, light fingers in this, nothing clampy, so that we have as much potential to adjust and correct our intonation as possible, 
as well as here with our slides where we're going and we can like constantly just tell and um, adjust what we're up to when we're sliding all over the place on our g-strings. More on that to come. Now variation five, you'll notice that there's a rit into it and now we're going down to crotch equals 50. So this is actually a nice leisurely tempo. It's mezzo piano espressivo and legato and it's a lovely opportunity to really be sonorous viola players, which I'm sure you all are amazingly. Um, so let's really use this as an, as an exercise to breathe in and out with our bows. So first of all, inhale. <sighs> conscious of how we speak each note and the line and the phrase um, we have to carry it the whole way through nothing dropped so this is a really good one to listen 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 and don't let yourself get away with any lumps or bumps no um, portatos please that's like sausage factories none of that let's have a lovely smooth legato line and be really really strict with yourself because I know that I fall into those traps I was like yeah that'll be fine but no it will not be fine. Let's get it beautiful and legato and smooth. Um, now, variation six is a seriously funky one, as I'm sure you are now familiar with. Um, it's a really rhythmical one, so let's actually put our violas down for a second. Um, I'm going to count to two, one, two, and then I want you to clap with me. One, two, one, two, one. enough and it goes on and on like that the trick though is to really bounce off that in bar two after that semi quaver rest and we want the accent on it as well so let's just try and do that with all the information on the page so variation six one two one one two one one two one one two one, two, one. i think i played the wrong note sorry in bar four was it um, but that's the idea, we want to really ping out those accents with a burst of bow speed and our left hand vibrato as well. So there are lots of different ways of doing accents, uh, which we will talk about in the next video. Um, but let's really think about how pingy they could possibly be um, and how rhythmical they could be, how concise. Um, so the other thing we need to think about is where we are in the bow. I think lower half would be great for this because we have loads of control, loads of concise, impactful noises. So now we're on to the finale, which is the same material as the opening theme, with the exception of a coda at the end. So let's just look at that. Let's be mindful here from bar 151 of our bow distribution because we need to be careful to save enough bow for that long minim or half note. Um, so we always want to come back to the heel. So from 151, we are one, two, mm. two, one. Now I'm sure that doesn't sound brilliant because I haven't yet done my practice on it. Um, but maybe we should do that together. So from 159, um, we want to go really slowly, really mindful of those string crossings. flourish let's really use all our bows and get all those strings resonating uh, with that faster bit from 159 um, let's just work it up notch by notch so start really slowly like that and then put yourself up a few notches on the metronome I'm sure I can trust you to do that sensibly um, all right that's it for me for now uh, there will be further details and more things to talk about in the future um, but this is hopefully just a good starting point for your practice Thanks, guys, and see you soon. Bye.